Hi there, I'm going to look at a video for a total energy when you're going to heat up a sample and this is going to involve temperature changes and phase changes. So if we were to consider a sample of ice that's starting at a negative 110 degrees Celsius and you're going to heat it and heat it and heat it up until eventually you get water at 110 degrees Celsius. Let's talk about what would happen. We'll look at the heating curve and then see if we can get through all the calculations in, in one video. Well, when you start off, you're going to have ice at negative 10 degrees, and that has to get heated up until you have ice at zero degrees. That has to happen before it becomes water. Then you will have ice at zero degrees, and it has to change state and become water at zero degrees. There won't be a temperature change, but energy is still pouring into that ice, causing it to change its state and its molecular arrangement from ice to water, from solid to liquid. But then, once you have all of water at zero degrees, that will again be heated up until you have water at 100 degrees. Water at 100 degrees will then have to be continue to be heated until it changes its state to steam at 100 degrees. So that's another phase change. Then steam at 100 degrees would become steam, has to get heated to steam at 110 degrees. So the types of formulas you would have, you would be dealing with a Q equals MC delta T here, heating of a substance. Then you would have uh, heating delta H equals NH, a heat uh, uh, phase change, excuse me. That's the second thing we would do. Then you have another Q equals MC delta T for water being heated up, step three. Then a phase change from water to steam, delta H equals NH, step four. And the fifth one is your last heat change, Q equals MC delta T. So lots of work to do, five different steps to calculate. If we took a look at what the heating curve would look like, What's going to happen is you're going to start at negative 10 degrees, the temperature would rise, and then it would peak at zero degrees. It would stop rising for a while as it's changing state and it's becoming water. It's changing from ice to water. Then it's all water at zero, heats all the way up to water at 100, water at 100 changing to uh, steam, then steam at 100 would go up to steam of 110. So you've got A, B, C, D, E corresponding to the numbers 1 to 5 as the steps up there. Just giving you a look at what the heating curve would look like. Now if we start all these calculations, we needed to do in step 1, you were going from ice at, uh, we had a temperature of negative 10 degrees as our starting temperature. Our final temperature was 0 degrees Celsius. The heat capacity, because we're heating it, heat capacity of ice, is 2.01 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we need to know what the mass of the ice was. I don't remember if I defined that. Let's assume we have a mass of 10 grams of ice. So if we come in, we'll have a mass of 10 grams of ice. And we want to know how much heat is involved. So we have Q is MC delta T. We will have 10 grams heat capacity. 2.01 gra uh, joules, excuse me, per gram degree Celsius, and final minus initial is a uh, 10 degree Celsius change. So that, when you multiply all those together, you would get 201 joules is the amount of heat that would be used up at that point. So 201 joules is the energy just to change the water uh, the uh, score, sorry, to heat the ice from negative 10 to 0. Now we're at step 2, where you now have the 10 grams of ice at 0, and you need to change it to water at 0. That means you have to use the heat effusion of uh, ice, 6.03 kilojoules per mole. Well, we got a problem now because I don't have the number of moles. I need N moles is mass over molar mass. I've got videos and working all that stuff out. So you take your mass of water, divide by the molar mass of water, how many grams per mole, and we'll figure out how many moles we have. So we need to take 10 and divide by 18.02. Turn our calculator on. It never turns on. 
seem to want to turn on. There we go. 10 divided by 18.02 gives us 0 0.555 moles. So we'll have 0 0.555 moles. And now we can work out our calculation here. I'll move some of these points I had down. And we'll do the formula that the enthalpy change for the uh, phase change is N times H. So we have 0 0.55 moles times 6.03 uh, kilojoules per mole. So we need to multiply those together. We take our answer. We will multiply by 6.03 and you get 3.346 kilojoules 3.346 kilojoules of energy so that is the same as 3346 joules Let's take a quick check of my time okay so we've got this many joules for just heating up the ice and changing it to water. Step three, you've got 100 grams of water now, or excuse me, 10 grams of water now, that is being heated from zero degrees to 100 degrees, so that's a temperature change of 100. Our heat capacity for water is different than ice, it's 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. So, taking a look at this, we would set up Q is MC delta T. We have 10 grams, 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius, and a temperature change of 100. Well, that is 4,190 joules of energy required for that step. Step four, we still have our number of moles, 0 0.555 moles of ice, and to change it from water to steam, we use a vaporization molar enthalpy of 40.8 kilojoules per mole, so we can figure out the delta H for the melting or the yeah the, uh, the boiling point and we would take n times h again our 0 0.555 times 40.08 would give us a number of kilojoules so we needed to take the 0.555 times 40.8 gives us 22.644 Remembering our units, that is the number of kilojoules, so we know you have 22,644 joules, tons of energy there. Our last step is to heat up, so we're back to Q equals MC delta T, starting at a temperature of 100, finishing at a temperature of 110, so that's a delta T of 10 degrees, we now have a mass of 10 grams and our heat capacity for steam is the same as it was for ice it's 2.01 joules per gram degree celsius so q is mc delta t you have 10 grams for uh 2.01 excuse me some mistake there 10 degrees celsius another 201 joules so, in our last step to sum everything up, we don't have much time to do it, we have to take all three of those energies and add them together.